We're doing an experimental restoration project here to see if we can reestablish a native plant community by placing these uh, essentially pre-made hummocks with native plants, uh, trees and shrubs in them on top of the reed canary grass in hopes that it'll get a leg up and survive, grow up and shade out the reed canary grass. Yeah, so we're in a, an oxbow wetland that the Tulalip tribes purchased for the purposes of conservation and restoration. It's in the neighborhood of Startup, Washington, in proximity to the Wallace River, which is a large salmon producer in this area. The wetland has been invaded almost completely with reed canary grass, which is a, a nasty player in the environment here. Reed canary grass is a big problem out here. It was initially brought in as a feed source for cattle. Turns out that cattle don't actually like it once it's dried out, so it wasn't great for that either. But it's a really, really aggressive plant. It'll take over wet communities. So this wetland is almost purely reed canary grass with a couple shrubs here and there, but it's a unique grass and that it creates rhizomatous mats, which are basically just roots growing everywhere and creating these really dense mats that trap silt from the water. So it actually builds kind of a soil itself, which can stop other plants from growing and establishing. It can actually create the point where root masses and root mats get so big that they can block salmon streams and actually stop salmon from going upstream or choke them out completely. We picked our plot locations based on areas that were predominantly reed canary grass, which is the entire wetland, so that was an easy one. We also needed to find spots that didn't have stream channels in them, so that we made sure that we didn't accidentally drop any pallets on salmon or anything else. Also, trees don't really like growing in streams. We wanted to set this project up for success by not accidentally drowning our own plants. So it's impractical to come into an area like this to do a restoration planting. The hope with this project is that you can actually put plants into a degraded wetland like this that's inaccessible without ever having to set foot in it. Just have a helicopter plop these things in here, never have to touch them. Helicopters have been used pretty extensively to drop large witty debris, in other words, fallen trees and logs into rivers and streams for salmon habitat, but I don't believe anybody has tried using a helicopter to plop a pre-made island planted with trees and shrubs. The Wallace Fish Hatchery was gracious enough to let us use some open space on their property. Todd was able to get everything magically to be delivered around the same time. So we had soil, 120 pallets, we had pallets with rope on them, pallets with burlap, all that came together. Then we had essentially four days of building pallets. So that was actually putting the pallet on the ground, putting burlap, putting soil on it, wrapping up all the soil in the burlaps and using the biodegradable stakes to put that all together. And then the following week, we actually planted all of the pallets over three days four shrubs and one tree per pallet. And that was also a bit of trial and error trying to figure out how to get two to five gallon buckets of plants in through the burlap into the soil, get them in there firm enough to not fall out when the helicopter came. Well, the day of the helicopter, we started off waiting for the helicopter to show up, uh, anticipating that with great excitement. And when that helicopter sound started coming closer, my heart started beating as fast as the helicopter. Michelle and I had a lot of concerns, fears, and, and nervousness around this thing because there's so many unknowns. But after the helicopter got there, and then came down to pick up the first pallet. That was a very exciting moment. 
We didn't know if the pallet was just going to break apart, if the ropes were going to break, if the thing was going to tip over and dump the load, or if we were even going to be able to fit the ropes into the hook because all of this business is, is brand new and never tried before. So. It was very nerve wracking because we knew when the first one went that was going to set the tone for if this was even possible or if the day was over. I was in the wetland when the first helicopter came over and it was just, I was ecstatic. It was a really eye-opening moment of just like, oh, this actually worked. I mean, we'd done all the experimenting, we'd done the math, it should work, but it's always different actually seeing it happen. We got 90 of these pre-planted pallets put out into the wetland in one day. And in all of that time, I think we only had two or three pallets not successfully make it over here. Those were good odds, and we consider that a very successful day. It worked. For Tulalips, another tool that we can use to support fish and to support tribal uses of wetlands. Beyond that, it really makes Tulalip be a resource for others to improve wetlands beyond just the properties that we own. Yeah, this could be used throughout Washington State and it really means that other agencies and other management places are looking to Tulalip as a leader in this kind of work. Yep, 